What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fancy Fitness. So let's start this video with 3 days old physique update of John Jude. And the man is looking absolutely insane right now. So he was able to grow everywhere but his waistline stayed exactly the same. It still looks the same as it was back when he was in the 2 12 division. Which is really always a bodybuilder's goal when he is trying to put on more tissue, more mass. Just take a look at that side chest shot. The hamstring drop is absolutely crazy. But I do believe and I think all of you guys will agree that everyone including John Jude will have an extremely hard time to beat Akeem Williams in those side shorts. As Akeem Williams has that nasty detail on the side of his legs, probably one of the best out there. Plus, with the size that he has, that is so damn impressive. But still, John has done one hell of a job picking an earlier show than what was originally on his schedule. And he seems to be in the prime form right now to peak for this show. I mean the guy is ready like 6 weeks earlier and that is just nuts. Now as a bodybuilding fan I am so glad that he switched from the 212 to the men's open bodybuilding because there is just no way in hell he would have been able to suck down to 212 pounds after blowing up to 250 pounds in the offseason and still look his best. That just wasn't gonna happen. Plus his physique would have never progressed if he stayed in the 212 division. Now all that being said Credit must be given to both Hadi Chuban as well as the reigning Mr. Olympia, Derek Lansford, who both can be considered trendsetters in that aspect. Because these guys paved the way for the other 212 guys to make that switch to the men's open. Flex Lewis won 7 of those 212 titles, and although he was struggling to make the weight every single year, especially after 2015, but still he did not switch to a bigger class. And looking back at this, I believe that must have been one of his biggest regrets. So very excited to see John Jr. nail his peak for Toronto Pro. He's gonna be dangerous and Akeem Williams must not slip, especially in terms of conditioning here. Because if he does, John Jr. is just gonna slide past by very easily and he has all the tools to win this show. So since we are talking about Toronto Pro, next up is the physique update of Hassan Mustafa. Now maybe this picture isn't a recent one, it wasn't taken 3 days out. Because if it is in fact a recent one, then either the lighting here is off or Hassan Mustafa isn't where he needs to be, especially when he is this close to the shoe. But in his defense, he looked a lot better in the updates that we saw yesterday. So almost everyone knows that Hassan Mustafa is one of the most difficult athletes to pick right. The fact is he has worked with so many coaches over the years and some very big names like Chris Aceto, AJ Sims, Chad Nichols, and the only person who was actually consistent in terms of picking him right, that was AJ Sims back in 2022. But him and Hassan Mustafa parted ways before the end of the 2022 season. Maybe that happened because Hassan had some health issues. And that is why he wasn't able to compete at 2022 Mr. Olympia. He was all in up until 2 weeks out of the show. But despite winning 2 shows that year, he was unable to compete at the Olympia. Now Chad Nichols also did a good job with Hassan Mustafa. But we have to keep in mind. Hassan was extremely off in one of the shows last year. That was Orlando Pro, where he lost to a guy like Finn Clahar, which is something that was totally unexpected. So now during Hamilton as his coach, he has a real challenge in front of him. I still believe Hassan Mustafa holds so much muscle on his frame that even when he is not at his best, he's still gonna be in the mix, especially in a qualifier. I mean, the guy is one of the most freaky and most muscular guy in the men's open right now. So if he looks anything close to last year's Toronto Pro package, he's gonna be in the mix fighting for those top spots. But still, I do think that for him to win this show, Akeem Williams needs to slip a bit. He needs to come in off. But do let me know what you guys think. One of the most aesthetic guys in the 212 division right now, Christian Zagarella is gonna be competing at Toronto Pro in 3 days time. So the Neo Pro did not go as per his plan, as per his expectations and he plays outside of the top 3. So this is a guy who was competing in classic physique category like 2 years ago. And you guys will be surprised to hear this, that he was actually able to beat Wesley Wizards in one of the shows back then. And his physique in classic was really impressive as well. But I do think he looks a lot more impressive in the 2 12 class, because he appears way more aesthetic and more pleasing to the eye. And at the same time, he is a bigger version of himself. So why is Zagarella not being rewarded by the judges? He placed runner up behind Ahmad Ashkenani in two shows last year in that post Olympia tour. Despite having way more aesthetic physique than Ahmad Ashkenani, despite having more classic lines, 
despite having a smaller waist. Plus, at the same time, he was in an equally good condition. Maybe it is because guys in the 212 class, they are so much thicker, so much denser than Zagarello. And he needs more time to build that density. Just take a look at the winner of this year's New York Pro, Oli. He was in a crazy condition, and he had plenty of muscle on his frame. But still, I have to say with Keon Pearson as the reigning 212 champion, Zagarella has a great future in this division. He just needs more time. So what kind of confidence Wesley Wieser has going into the most important bodybuilding competition of his career? Mr. Olympia 224. Well, here is his answer. And what are his expectations and aim for this upcoming Mr. Olympia and Classic? So Wesley Wieser's rise to the top at this year's Arnold Classic has to be one of the biggest storylines of this year. I mean, it was the biggest upset and no one saw that coming. And on top of that, Wesley repeating his victory at the Arnold UK as well. That was a loud and clear message to everyone out there that him winning the Arnold Ohio, that wasn't just a fluke. And now he is a legitimate threat to the Olympia title this year. So all the updates that we have seen from Wesley after the Arnold this year, they have been so damn impressive. He has been looking big as a house. But at the same time, he has been holding an insane often body composition. He has been putting on size in all the right areas while staying in a great often condition. And maybe that is why Chris Bumstead feels that he needs to bring his absolute best in 2024. Because never once he has stood next to a guy who is taller than him and arguably bigger and wider than him. So Wesley is 6'2", with some of the most unbelievable and round muscle bellies. Although I do have to say his quads still need more mass in the front shorts. But I think we all have to agree, they are pretty well separated. The hamstrings is that area which needs the most attention. And Wesley has been working on that frequently. So because of the Wesley Wieser's factor, the Olympia this year in classic physique is going to be a lot more exciting. Especially in comparison to previous two years, where Chris Bumstead and Ramondino were the last two men standing. So does Wesley has what it takes to dethrone a guy like Chris Bumstead? Andrea Presti, who was supposed to compete at Toronto Pro in two years time, Unfortunately, he is out of the race, and I won't be surprised if he is unable to compete at Emperor Classic Spin as well, where he placed a very close second behind Michael Crizzo last year. So the reason for him dropping out is because Presti was admitted to the hospital because of some health concerns, which led him to lose a lot of weight. And just because it happened so close to the show, that made it impossible for Presti to keep going, and health always comes first. So he is three times Portugal Pro Champion, and Portugal Pro is still a month away, so we will see whether he decides to defend that title or not. And in all honesty, the kind of competition that we are seeing in the recent shows, the chances of him winning that show, they aren't that good either. So William Barnack has already confirmed that he is doing that show. We saw Nathan Yisha hinting that he might do Portugal Pro. So the chances of Preste winning it for the fourth time, they are kind of little at this point. And that is of course if his health allows him to do that show because we do not exactly know how serious that problem is. So wishing him a speedy recovery and let's see what his plans are and when he decides to compete next. So hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video and smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.